Joseph Ayo Babalola. It was Professor Saburi Biobaku who said, Great men appear now and again to help shape the course of human history. The history of their lives does not of itself amount to the totality of the history of man. It nevertheless serves to illuminate that history and unravel the course of human events. The story of Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola, his life and work can thus be classified. His unprecedented Okeoye revival gave birth to what is now known as the Christ Apostolic Church, CAC, a Nigerian indigenous church. His background. Joseph Ayo Babalola was born on April 25, 1904 to David Rotimi and Madame Martha Talabi, who belonged to the Anglican Church. The family lived in Oduowa in Ilofa, a small town about 90 kilometers from Ilori in Kwara State, Nigeria. His father was the Babaijo, that's church father, of the CMS Church at Oduowa. Pastor Medayeshe wrote in his book, Itan Igbe Dide Woli Ayo Babalola, that mysterious circumstances surrounded the birth of Babalola. On that day, it was believed that a strange and mighty object exploded and shook the clouds. Babalola's strange experience started on the night of September 25, 1928, when he suddenly became restless and could not sleep. This went on for a week and he had no inkling of the causes of such a strange experience. The climax came one day when he was, as usual, working on the Elisha Igbaraoke Road. Suddenly, the steam roller's engine stopped to his utter amazement. There was no visible mechanical problem and Joseph became confused and perplexed. He was in a state of confusion when a great voice, like the sound of many waters, called him three times. The voice was loud and clear and it told him that he would die if he refused to heed the divine call to go into the world and preach. Babalola, the same voice came to Joseph a second time, asking him to fast for seven days. He obeyed and at the end of the period, he saw a great figure of a man who, according to Pastor Locon, resembled Jesus. The man in a dazzling robe spoke at length about the mission he was to embark upon. The man also told him of the persecutions he would face and at the same time assured him of God's protection and victory. A hand prayer bell was given to Babalola as a symbol. He was told that the sound of the bell would always drive away evil spirits. He was also given a bottle of life-giving water to heal all manners of sickness. Consequently, wherever and whenever he prayed into water for therapeutic purposes, effective healing was procured for those who drank the water. Thus, Babalola became a prophet and a man with extraordinary powers. Enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit, he could spend several weeks in prayer. The Itinerary of Prophet Babalola in October 1928, he entered the town in the manner described and was taken for a madman. Babalola immediately started preaching and prophesying. He told the inhabitants of Odoa about an impending danger if they did not repent. He was arrested and taken to the district officer at Ilori for allegedly disturbing the peace. The district officer later released him when the allegations could not be proven. However, it was said that a few days later, there was an outbreak of smallpox in the town. The man whose prophecies and messages were once rejected was quickly sought for. He went around praying for the victims and they were all healed. On an invitation from Daniel Ajibola, Babalola went to Lagos. Elder Daniel Ajibola at that time was working in Ibadan, where he was a member of the Faith Tabernacle Congregation. He introduced Prophet Babalola to Pastor D. O. Odubanjo, one of the leaders of the Faith Tabernacle in Lagos. Senior Pastor Esinsinade, who was then the president of the Faith Tabernacle, was invited to see Babalola. After listening to the details of his call and his ministry, the Faith Tabernacle leaders warmly received the young prophet into their midst. The fact that Babalola did not use the opportunity to establish a separate Christian organization despite his marvelous evangelical success must be puzzling to historians, but his intention was not to start a new church. 
He declared to his followers that he had registered his membership with the Faith Tabernacle, the society which had him baptized in Lagos. He thus persuaded them to become members of the Faith Tabernacle. To facilitate this, he went to Lagos to confer with the leaders, especially as he was not yet well acquainted with the doctrines, tenets, and administration of the church. Okeoye Mighty Revival there was a controversy among the leaders of the Faith Tabernacle in Nigeria over some doctrines. Issues like the use of Western and traditional drugs versus divine healing, polygamy, and whether polygamous husbands should be allowed to partake of the Lord's Supper were among those doctrines that needed to be agreed on. The representatives began their meeting and on the agenda were 24 items. The first was the validity of baptism administered to a man with many wives. The second was the issue of divine healing because some of the members believed in the use of drugs like quinine to cure malaria fever. They were only able to discuss the first item when there was a sudden interruption which Pastor Adikboyega described as thus. The consolatory talks at Elisha were going on when suddenly a mighty sweeping revival broke out at Faith Tabernacle Congregation Church at Okeoye, Elisha. The revival began with the raising by Babalola of a dead child. The mother of the dead child, who was restored to life, went about spreading the news around the towns of Elisha, proclaiming that a miracle working prophet had come to the town of Okeoye. This attracted a large number of people to Okeoye to see the prophet. Quote, no greater revival preceded that of Babalola. It was popularly held in Christ Apostolic Church CAC circles that at one revival meeting, attendance rose to about 40,000. Babalola's Other Missionary Journeys After the great revival of Okeoye, the prophet was directed by the Holy Spirit to go out on further missionary journeys. But even before this, people from other parts of the country had been spreading the glad tidings of Okeoye, Elisha's great revival, to other parts of the country. Accompanied by some followers, Joseph Babalola went to Ofa in present Kwara State. Characteristically, people turned out to hear his preaching and see miracles. He next stopped in Ushi in Ekitiland for his evangelical mission and he performed many works of healing. From Ushi, he and his men moved to Efon Alaye, also in Ekitiland, where they received a warm reception from the Oba Alaye of Efon. An entire building was provided for their comfort. Babalola requested an open space for prayer from the Oba, who willingly and cheerfully gave him the privilege to choose a site. An entire building was provided for their comfort. Consequently, the Prophet and his men chose a large area at the outskirts of town. Traditionally, the place was a forbidden forest because of the evil spirits that were believed to inhabit it. The Oba tried to dissuade Babalola and his men from entering the forbidden forest. But Babalola insisted on establishing his prayer ground there. The missionaries entered the bush, cleared it, and consecrated it as a prayer ground. When no harm came upon them, the inhabitants of Efon were inspired to accept the new faith in large numbers. In 1935, he married Dorcas. The birth of the CAC in Nigeria. The spectacular evangelism by Prophet Joseph Ayo Babalola brought with it a wave of persecution to all who rushed into the new faith. The mission churches allegedly became jealous and hostile, especially as their members constituted the main converts of the faith tabernacle. It was widely rumored that the revival movement was a lawless and unruly organization. Despite these disappointing relationships with foreign groups, the Nigerian Faith Tabernacle still considered it prestigious to seek affiliation with foreign bodies. This was followed by a formal request for missionaries to be sent to strengthen the position of the Nigerian Faith Tabernacle. Missionaries did come and on their advice, the Nigerian Faith Tabernacle was ceded to the British Apostolic Church. Consequently, the name changed from Faith Tabernacle to the Apostolic Church. Doctrinal differences between the two groups began to appear in forms similar to the ones that caused the termination of the association with the American groups. The subject of divine healing was one of the most important issues. Some of the invited white missionaries from Britain were found using quinine and other tablets and this caused a serious controversy among the leading members. 
It was unfortunate that the controversy could not be resolved and the movement subsequently split. 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 One faction of the church made Okeoye its base and retained the name the Apostolic Church. The other larger faction, and in which Prophet Joseph Babalola was a leader, eventually became the Christ Apostolic Church. This church had to go through many names before May 1943, when its title was finally registered with number 147 under the Nigerian Company Law of 1924. Today, the church controls over 5,000 assemblies and reputedly is one of the most popular Christian organizations in Nigeria and the only indigenous organization with strong faith in divine healing. Joseph Ayo Bapalola slept in the Lord in 1959. <laughs> Amen. I'll ask the protocol officers to please bring up and I will ask Mr. and Mrs. Shola Adeloye to please come up. All right, I just want to read out because it's a very strong lesson. Um, Apostle Joseph Ayababala's daughter sent in about an hour ago. I deem Deborah Iyabo Adini on behalf of our father, Apostle Joseph Ayababala, want to thank you for deeming it fit to honor Baba for submitting himself to serve God selflessly. It is a joy that Baba is being remembered after 60 years of his demise, as if he just died yesterday. While I am praying, please listen to this, and this is an important message. While I'm praying that we, Baba's family, stand in the way of the Lord, I also appeal to the present-day servants of God to be passionate in their call to serve. Do everything possible to evangelize the nation or evangelized nationwide and beyond. I pray, she says, sorry, I pray that God will fill you up with fresh anointing to do exploits. In Jesus' name, amen. So I thank you and may God bless your ministry. So, I mean, nobody can reward. It's only God that can reward a person for their service. This is not for him. This is for us. All right. So, very important. Because the last time we did something like this, it triggered literature. People started buying literature on Pi Elton. People started reading about it. People began to discover things. So, we'll find more young people reading about it, discovering things, and coming to understand how people have served God in selfless ways in this country and that we are really standing upon this. So on behalf of, I like all the ministers standing in front, all of you please come forward. On behalf, in a symbolic way, of young ministers in this country, quickly. And I must mention that our dear brother, Reverend K, got saved in a Christ apostolic, so he's a CAC man. <laughs> he's a CAC man. Which is why he went home to change, so that he can do honor properly to whom honor is due. I'd like you both to come for a place. I'd like just, all of you just put your hands together on this Let's, and give it up. In the name of Jesus Christ, we present this to you in honor of the work your father did. God bless you. Amen. 
Amen. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, we're really glad to be here this evening um, in the midst of the people of God. Um, we thank you for what God is doing in our individual lives and also in Nigeria. Um, this is actually a recognition um, and honor to God who was able to express himself through a vessel in the person of Apostle Babalola. Um, he, was a, he was a man of faith uh, who never doubted God. Um, his only reality was basically God. Um, all facts and figures bowed. His reality was only God. That is what he knew, in spite of his uh, lack of education. But what he knew was only God. His, that was his reality. Thank you very much. We appreciate you very much. Let's take a place for the God. Excuse me. Let's just take one for the one more for the God. Where are the other? Tell me quickly. Are you, can you get the shop? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> 